Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, someone asked me if I could do a video demonstrating frequency separation. Frequency separation is a great technique for retouching skin. Now, it's a multi-step process and it does involve a formula. But the good news is, the first several steps and the formula are pretty much the same for every image. So to save time, you could create an action that will do those first several steps and the formula for you. What I've done is I've created that action and you could have it for free. In the description below this video will be a link to it. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to install that action into Photoshop and use it. But before I do that, I wanna show you frequency separation from beginning to end and try to explain the concept behind it. Now I have this image here that I downloaded from Adobe Stock. And you can see over here in the Layers panel, it's just the background layer. Step number one is you need to make two copies of that background layer. On my Mac, I'm just going to hit Command-J twice. On a PC, you'd hit Control-J twice. Now the idea with frequency separation is you have color and tone on one layer and texture on the other layer. That way, if you have a color or tone issue like blotchy skin or a blemish that isn't really raised, it's just changed in color, you would do that work on the color and tone layer and you won't affect the texture of the skin. On the other hand, if you have a texture issue like you have a wrinkle or you have a raised blemish, you would do that work on the texture layer and you won't affect the color or tone of the skin. So that's why a lot of people like to use frequency separation to retouch skin. Now we have our two layers. One of these layers is for color and tone and the other one is for texture. What I recommend you do is rename them so you know which is which. The middle layer is going to be the color and tone layer. So I'm just gonna rename that color. You could rename it again, anything you like, it doesn't matter. The top layer is for texture. So I'm gonna rename that one texture. If I could spell it right. There we go. All right, now we have the color layer and the texture layer. Now what we need to do is turn off the texture layer by clicking on the little eyeball, then click on the color layer to make it active. What we're gonna do is add some blur. Some retouchers like to use surface blur, others like to use Gaussian blur. Personally, I've not found a difference, I've used both. I'm just going to use Gaussian blur because it applies a little faster. So we're gonna go up to filter, blur, then down to Gaussian Blur. Now you want to just add a radius, what I found, between two and three. It doesn't really matter as much what the resolution of your image is. You just want to blur the edges a bit. So between two and three is, is good, 2.5. We're going to stick right there and click OK. So we have that blurred color layer. Now we're going to go back up to that texture layer, click on it and make it active. Now this is where the formula comes in. And the formula is different depending on your, if you're using an eight or you're working on an 8-bit image or a 16-bit image. Now this is a JPEG, so it's an 8-bit image. If you're not sure what bit image you're working on, to find out, go up to Image, Mode, and you can see down towards the bottom, you can see 8 bits per channel is checked. So this is an 8-bit image. So you could double check here. If you're working on a TIFF and you're not sure if it's 8 bits or 16 bits, you could find out right there. Now. The formula, I mentioned it's different if it's 8-bit or 16-bit. Now I'm going to show you both of them, so that way you can make a screenshot of them if you want, but I'll also have the settings listed in the description below this video. Now, to do this, make sure you're on that texture layer and it's active. Go up to Image, then down to Apply Image, and you can see this Apply Image dialog box pops up. Now I'm going to show you 16-bit first. I'm not going to use it on this image, but I'm just going to show it to you. You can make a screenshot or take notes if you prefer. Source, this is just the name of this file. I mentioned I downloaded the file from Adobe Stock. It was like Adobe Stock and it had a big long number on it. I just renamed it Chloe. I don't know if her name's Chloe. I just renamed it to show you it's the name of this image. All right, now layer, this is important. Click on this little drop down. You can see the three layers are listed there, background, color, and texture. Even though we're on the texture layer and the texture layer is active, we're gonna put color here. So we're going on that middle layer. So whatever you name that middle layer, 
that's what you put there. You're going to want RGB channel. Now for a 16-bit image, you're going to want to click on invert and you want to change the blending to add. When you do that, this two boxes pop up and it's showing a scale of two and offset of zero and those are the settings you want. So this is the setting for a 16-bit file. Again, this isn't a 16-bit file, it's 8-bit. So for an 8-bit file, we still have color as the layer. We don't use invert though, so we'll turn that off. We change the blend mode from add to subtract. And for the scale and offset, it's 2 and 128. And again, I'll have these settings listed in the description below the video. Now this is an 8-bit file, so I'm going to click OK. So now you can see it kind of looks a little odd. Well, we're going to change the blend mode from normal down to linear light. Now once I've done that, we're right back where we started. For instance, if I turn off those top two layers and we just have the background layer on, and then I turn those top two layers back on, you can see nothing's changed. Well, again, that's because we're going to do our color and tone work on the color layer, and we're going to do any texture issues. We're going to fix those on the texture layer. That way, we don't mess up color and tone when we're working on texture, and we don't mess up any texture when we're working on color and tone. So very, very easy. Now, what we're going to do first, what I like to do, this is optional, is I like to put these in their own group or folder. To do that, just make sure they're both active. I clicked on the texture layer. I'm going to hold in the command key and click on the color label. On a PC, you'd hold the control key in so they're both selected. Go down here where this little folder is and click on that. Now we have a group. I'm going to rename the group frequency separation and click the return key or enter key. And now we have them just in here. Now they act exactly the same. They're just in a folder basically. All right. Now to demonstrate what you would do. All right. The main tools you're going to use are over here in the tool well. You're going to use mainly the spot healing brush, the healing brush, and the patch tool, and the clone stamp tool. Those are the main tools you'll be using. And generally speaking, when you're using any of these brush tools, you're going to, if you're working on color, you're going to want to use a soft brush. If you're working on texture, you're going to want to use a hard brush. Those usually will yield the best results. Now, just to demonstrate this very quickly, let's zoom in a touch. All right, and I'm going to go here. And we see this little wrinkle in the corner of her face. It's got two things. It's, it's got different color, but it also has texture, right? Because the wrinkle. So we want to get rid of the wrinkle, all right? So we're on the texture layer. I'm just going to use the spot healing brush tool. You could use any of these tools. Again, we'll use spot healing though for this demonstration. And it, since I'm on the texture layer, I want a really hard brush. So we'll go to 100. And the brush, I'm just going to make it big enough to cover that wrinkle. And I'll paint right on it. And you'll see when I do that, it got rid of the wrinkle, but the color is still there, right? Now we could go to color. Now I could go back up to my uh, brush attributes and I would take hardness down to zero. So we're using a very soft brush. And I'll get a bigger thing. And actually, I think what would work better for this one is the healing brush tool. And plus I could demo it to you if you're not sure how to use it. What you do is with the healing brush is a opposed to the spot healing brush is with the healing brush, you get a sample area first. The sample area is done by holding in the alter option key. It's alt if you have PC option. If you have a Mac, you can see you turn into that little bullseye. Just click once with the left mouse button. So we're sampling right there and then we're coming in here and we're getting rid of that. So you could come in here and get rid of it. So we're working on the color independently of the texture. Now, I just want to show you the patch tool, how you would use that. So we'll go there and we'll go to the patch tool. Now you could experiment with different settings. Some settings might work better in certain situations, others in other situations. I'm going to use content aware. Now I'm on color, all right? And color, when you're using a brush, you want to use a soft brush. Now that would be controlled by structure. 
Uh, one would be the softest edges possible, and seven would be the hardest edges possible. So we'll go with one. And you could experiment with different color. Color will go from zero to 10. Um, I'm just going to leave it at zero. I don't, the color doesn't affect it quite as much as some of these other uh, issues. Now you can see right here, she has kind of a, a patch, like a red patch right here. There is some texture issues as well, a little bit, just a tiny bit, but, but it's mostly color. So what we're going to do is we're on that color label layer. We're using the uh, patch tool. We're on content aware with a structure of one because we're on color. If I was on the texture layer, I'd use a structure of seven. All right, so we're just going to draw around this kind of like off color area right here like that. And then I'm just going to move it off over this way and let go. Now it did something, whether it's an improvement or not, I don't know, but well, let's do a before after. I'm going to hold the uh, alter option key. And while I click on the eyeball at the background layer, it's option on my Mac, alt on a PC. There's before and there's after. So you can see it did improve it. But again, uh, with the uh, frequency separation technique, this actually is a labor intensive technique. You have to do usually a lot of work. And most often, this is done when you have a professional model with professional makeup applied, and she might just have, or he just might have, you know, a blemish or two, or maybe just a little bit of a darker patch on their skin. The makeup didn't apply right or something. When you're working with people like me that have really bad skin and have a lot of blotches and things like that, it could take quite a while uh, to uh, fix it. So that's the idea here is, you would use these different tools over here uh, to work on the skin and do the best you can. Now we got an issue over here. I probably use the patch tool for that as well. Like this little dark area right here. And I'm on color still. You can see it's really mainly color, right? Go on that, move it up there. There, that, clean that up nicely. There's before, after, before, after. So you get the idea of what the idea is when you use frequency separation. So I'm not gonna beat this to death anymore, but I am going to show you how to install the free Photoshop action for this that you could uh, download. Uh, it's in the description below the video. All right, now I'm gonna get rid of everything we've just done. So we're right back to our original background layer. Now I'm in the photography workspace of Photoshop. If your Photoshop doesn't look like this and you want it to, go up over here, Click on this little drop down. You can see I'm in the photography workspace. You can click on that. In the photography workspace, you'll see an actions tab. If you don't see actions tab there, what you could do is go up to window and then make sure actions is clicked on there. Now, once that action tab is open, there's a little flyout menu where these lines are. If you click on that, this little flyout menu will open and you want to load actions. When you do that, a Finder window pops up on a Mac. If you have a PC, a Windows File Explorer pops up. Just know where you downloaded them to. I downloaded them to my desktop. It's right there and I called it Frequency Separation. So we're just gonna click on that and click Open. And when you do that, it's loaded right there. All right, now if we roll that down, you could see there's an 8-bit version and a 16-bit version. So I have you covered. So just click on the 8-bit version right there. And to run this uh, action, just click the play button. And when you do that, it ran it already. You can see I put them in a folder. It's called frequency separation. You could roll it open. There's texture, color, and you're good to go. Now from this point on, you could just start fixing the skin on your model or subject and you're ready to rock and roll. So again, thank you to the person that suggested I do this video and thank everyone for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.